Hello and welcome back to another lecture. In this lecture, we will create the buildspec.yaml file. The buildspec file is a collection of build commands and related settings in YAML format that code build will use to run the build job. So basically what this means is a build spec file contains a list of commands that code build will use to run the build. It is fine if you don't understand what a build spec file is for now. As we create our build spec for this project, everything will be clear to you. You can also read more about the build spec file in the AWS documentation. For example, if you go to Google, in Google, type buildspec.yml in the search box. So make sure you type it like this. It is buildspec.yml and press enter. Under your Google search results, look for the results that has the AWS documentation which says doc.aws.amazon.com. You will see build spec specification here, select it. This is the AWS documentation where you will find all the information on a build spec file. If you click build spec syntax here, and it will take you to the build spec syntax section. One thing I want you to know is that a build spec file must always be in YAML format. So when you are creating your build spec file, your build spec file must always be in YAML format. When you have some time, you can look through this documentation to learn more about build spec file. To create the build spec file we will use in our project, let's go back to Visual Studio Code. In Visual Studio Code, we will create a file in our CI CD folder and we will call the file buildspec.yml. So, what I want you to do is right click on your CI CD folder and select New File. Give the file a name, call it buildspec.yml. Type it exactly how you see it on my screen. So the name of the file is buildspec.yml. Once you type it, press enter. Once you have created the buildspec file, the next thing I want you to do is open the reference file I created for this lecture in this video's description. Once you've opened the reference file, this is the buildspec we will use for our code build job. What I want you to do is select everything in it. I'll press Ctrl A to select everything. Right click to copy, then you can close this file and in your build spec file, paste it in there. To explain what is in the build spec file, the first section is version, and the version that AWS recommends is version 0 0.2. You must enter this in your build spec file. Once you have entered the version, the next section we have is phases. And in this phase, we have three phase. We have the install phase, we have the pre-build phase, and we have the build phase. In the install phase, this is the phase where we will install any software we want to install on the container. For example, in this phase, I have had Python 3 here. We don't really need it for this project, but I've added here to show you how to install any software in this phase. So here, we will install Python 3 in the install phase. Once we have installed the software in the install phase, the next phase is the pre-build phase. In the pre-build phase, this is the phase where we will install Terraform and configure the named profile on the container. To explain this phase, I'm going to minimize this CI-CD folder just to show you what is going on. To explain what will happen in our code build job, remember our files are stored in our GitHub repository. So what code build would do is, code build will clone the repository on the container. Once code build clones the repository on the container, it will be in this directory. So the first command we have here is cd into the ci cd folder. So here, this command will cd into this ci cd folder, meaning that we are changing our directory into the ci cd folder. Once we have changed our directory into the ci cd folder, we want to make our shell script file executable. That is what this second command is doing. The command to make a shell script file executable is chmod plus x. Then you specify the name of the file you want to make executable. So here, the first file we have is install terraform.sh. 
which is the same file we have in here, install terraform.sh. The second file we want to make executable is configure named profile.sh and that is the same file you see here. And the third file we want to make executable is apply terraform.sh and that is the same file you see here. So for this file we want to make executable, whatever name you spelled it here, make sure you have entered the same exact name here or else it is not going to work. Once we have made the shell script file executable, the next command we will run is install terraform.sh and this is the command to install terraform. So here, if we go into our install terraform.sh file, so what it will do is it will run all these commands in this file. I'll go back to my buildspec.yaml file. The reason why I recommend using shell script file to run your command is because it makes your build spec file much cleaner. For example, we could have taken all this command in the install terraform.sh file and add it under the commands under our build spec and it will still work. But one thing I want you to note is that there are several commands to install terraform. So instead of adding all those commands here, and whoever is reading your build spec file will not know what each command is doing. It is better to bundle all those commands in a shell script file. So we know all these commands will install Terraform on the container. Once you have run this shell script file to install Terraform on the container, the next command will run the configure named profile.sh shell script on the container to configure our named profile. When we run this shell script, it is running the command in the configure name profile.sh file. One thing I want you to note here is because we are using an Amazon Linux container, AWS CLI already comes with it. So that's why we are not installing it here. Once we have installed Terraform and configure a named profile, the next phase we will move to is the build phase. In the build phase, we are also using command. And the command we want to run in this phase is apply terraform.sh. So when we run this shell script, what it will do is it will run all the commands in the apply terraform.sh file. This is similar to the same thing you would do on your computer. The first thing we will do here is change our directory back into our terraform projects directory. Remember, in order to run your terraform commands, you have to be in your terraform projects directory. That is why we have CD here. When you have cd dot dot, that means you want to exit out of the CICD folder to come back into the launch EC2 instance folder. This is the directory where our Terraform file is in. Remember in our build spec file, here we change directory into the CICD. One thing I want you to understand is everything we are running here is in a ordered step. So the first thing we did is we change our directory into the CI CD folder. So now that we want to run our apply terraform.sh file, we have to exit out of the CI CD folder to come back into our Terraform projects folder. So that is why we have CD and a two dot here. CD and a two dot means you want to exit out of the CI CD folder and you want to come back into the launch EC2 instance folder. This is the folder the Terraform project is in. Once you are in your Terraform projects folder, Code build will run Terraform in it, then it will run Terraform apply. This is how we use AWS code build to create the resources on our Terraform project in our AWS account. I'll go back to the build spec file. These are all the things you need to create a build spec file to apply your Terraform project. The next thing I want you to do is save your file. I'll select file and select save all. Another thing we can do is all the changes we have made, we can push it to our GitHub repository. To push it to your GitHub repository, I'm going to select source control here. First, I'm going to type message in here. I'm going to type created new files. Once you type your message, click commit. And once you've committed, click sync changes and it is going to push all those changes to your GitHub repository. If you have any questions on this lecture or there's any part you don't understand, please leave your comments below. Thank you and I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye.